So welcome, Pat Lawson, to Show and Share today. Pat is a rug weaver slash, or a rug hooker, sorry, slash weaver, moving into weaving a little more. Yeah. Pat, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us a Thanks. little bit more. Thanks, Rebecca. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm so thrilled to be here with you, Rebecca. I, I uh, discovered you over the course of um, the pandemic as I went to YouTube University on many subjects and realized that I was missing weaving. And you have wonderful videos uh, illustrating how to, how to get going. And um, anyway, uh, I have been following you uh, since. And um, here we are today. Um, you very, very uh, loving Lee reached out and asked if I would do this. And so I'm thrilled um, okay. to bring the craft forward because you mentioned that you were interested in knowing more about other fiber arts. Absolutely. So that, that's what brought me to you. Um, so anyway, um, I've come prepared to talk about the subject um, and I could wax on a long time, but in the interest of time, um, I'll try to keep it short. I've given it some thought. I've pulled together a few pieces Great. and um, I'll talk about them and what makes them tick, so to speak. Um, I'll start by just saying that I have been hooking since 1995 and so been hooking steadily every year. It's piling up. Um, <laughs> And you do sell or you have sold? I have sold, um, though I, I'm not right now. And I do find it hard to let go, I must admit. Um, I often bemoan the pieces that I've sold. but <laughs> And you can't keep it all, right? And, right. Um, and I've given it away, too, as gifts to people who I love. So mm -hmm. it gives me uh, much joy to just keep doing it and just um, share it. Um, because... I think it's an amazing uh, art and mm. craft. And what I love about it most is that it gives me the opportunity to reuse, uh, recycle, upcycle fiber. And uh, I love fiber and I love color. So it brings me to expressing myself with color and interpreting my world of landscape, of pattern, um, and uh, sometimes figurative. I like to do people and I like to do creatures, animals. Mm -hmm. I love the industrial landscape. And this is a uh, steel town over my shoulder. Oh, excuse me, I'm just gonna move the camera a wee bit. Um, that was influenced uh, by several trips that I used to take on the highway that went past Hamilton Harbor of Stelco and DeFasco. And every time I'd be driving, I would want to look there, not at the road, which is a bit of a problem. But anyway, do the quick head snap to get a look at this. And the shapes of the buildings and the, um, I forget what they're called, their way of getting stuff from one building to the other. And they run at these angles. Mm -hmm. um, just really pleased me. And then the slag heaps in the foreground. So, um, What started the whole thing was a blanket like this. Okay. It was the twin to this blanket. I happened to find this on Kijiji. Thank you very much. The fellow mailed it to me from Toronto, which was just so lovely. It's mohair. It's a Hudson Bay car blanket. Oh, wow. That I had found a mate, its mate, in the back of a little thrift store in Port Rowan. Thank you, Carol. Uh, for pointing it out to me and um, it had been washed and it had been felled so it, the weave had been made a bit tighter and I used it in some of the buildings and, oh, it, became, wow. and, it, and it became the colorway because the colors in this are just so amazing and it influenced um, I went to the dye pot for the slag heaps in the front to get that colorway to work with the rest and the rest of it was pretty much as found a lot of it blanket. So I love to work with blanket. Okay. Neat. So. It's great. I, I recognize that skyline, like from going over the bridge. Yeah. It's a familiar view. Yeah. I just, I love this piece so much. 
Um, so before I go too much further, I just will take a quick minute to talk a little bit about how it's done. So these are just examples of strips of wool coming from different types of, of things. So this was scarf, this magenta. This is a blanket. Well, was past tense. <laughs> this was um, a kilt. This is yardage. And I'm going to show you a finished piece of that. Blanket, blanket. I dyed that. That's as is and so on. So we got some really narrow cut stuff. Fine, as we call it, fine cut. And then it gets wider. And I like to hook wide, but I learned with this. So some of the early pieces that I'm going to show you were all done with that very fine cut and a hook like this. I have to laugh because it's so small. It's tiny. Oh, it's wow. really tiny. The hook on the end is so small and you can maybe make out the fact that it's bent because I started hooking wider as I wanted to and I started bending my hook. Oh, so then I went into my collection and my husband years when I first started years ago, put this in my Christmas stocking. And when I got it, I laughed because it was so big. And I thought, who did anything with this? Well, <laughs> when I started bending this, I remembered this, I went for it and I've never gone back. Nice. I can, I can even hook the really narrow stuff with my great big hook. And what I love about it is the size of the shank. So that shank allows me to make a nice big hole in my backing when I'm working on, whether oh. it's burlap or linen, then I can make the hole and pull up my end, then go down in the next hole, pull up a loop, next hole, pull up a loop, and so on. You get the picture. And then just keep doing that and doing that and doing that. And that natural tension holds the loops in so let's look at some rugs yeah let's look at some rugs all right so my very first learning piece is downstairs and it's really not that interesting so i i kind of forgot actually to bring it up um but my first serious rug well it was really the next piece that i did had a lot to do with what brought me to rug hooking in the first place, and that was my love of orientals. Wow, that was your first piece? Yes. Like your first real piece? And yes, wow. and I had an amazing teacher, Nancy wow. Beaton. She's since passed away. That's Nancy's amazing. She's an icon in our Ontario Hooking Craft Guild, which is one of many guilds around the world. And we're about a thousand members strong. And uh, Nancy was uh, a member, of course, and a teacher. And she was a very generous teacher. And um, so anyway, this has been on the floor at the end of my bed since 1996. And yeah. I picked it up today and thought, oh, it needs a little bit of cleaning. And it also needs some repair. So I've repaired it and I'm going to wash it. Oh, and wow. Any and that one. Sorry. That was woven with the really fine, um, what do you call yes. it? It's not thread, fine yeah. fabric. It's hooked with a tiny little narrow strip like this. We call this a number three. Gotcha. And that was my hook. And they're married well together, you know, in terms of size. But anyway, right. um, when people see the really wide hooking, if they're, and, and I shouldn't say there's a divide, but there tends to be people who really like, there are a lot of people who really like to hook narrow and that's all they do. And others who like to hook really wide and that's all they do. And then others who kind of like to mix it up. So I do like to mix it, especially when I'm doing landscapes. Neat. The finer uh, cuts can help me get detail where I wouldn't be able to get it with the wide. Right, that makes sense. So the next piece was this one. This is a commercial pattern, which um, is by famous rug hooker, Joan Moshimer. Wow. It's her Arundel Cruel, Tree of Life. And uh, I've seen it hooked by other people. And this is one of the fun things about an annual. When we have our great big annual shows, 
is the opportunity to see a pattern, commercial pattern, done by many, many different people. And um, so I have had the opportunity to take photographs of this uh, as done by others. So when you have are using a commercial pattern, is it do you get the color layout as well, or is that up to your own interpretation? Well, I shouldn't say no. Um, as I know Joan Moshimer, and she had a business, um, she would have photographed it as she hooked it, and she would have, in her business, made the same colors available to anybody who wanted right. to buy the wool from her. Um, or people are very much encouraged to do their own thing. Um, and... I hooked this with a four cut and a five cut instead of the three. So now I'm moving up, sneaking up to wider. Um, and to me, that was wide at the time. But I don't know if you can make that out. Oh, yeah. And then. See it. Yeah, I can't make. Oh, yeah, I can really. Yep. You're right. I can see the big difference. So I was really, I thought I was being very rebellious. <laughs> Um, now things may not be in perfect order, but relatively speaking. So this is still an early piece. This is also in a very narrow cut. Wow. This is my, my interpretation of a 14th century illumination, which I saw at the Metropolitan Museum in New York. And um, I love the idea of the woman on horseback with her armor on. And I thought of her as me going to work every day. <laughs> love it. <laughs> Fighting the fight. <laughs> I love it. That's amazing. So this was my first landscape. And it's of a place that's dear to me and my family. This is Killarney Provincial Park. Beautiful. And it's uh, George Lake, for those who know Killarney. The Narrows specifically, and um, it happens to be a memory of a moonlit night when we went there for my husband's birthday one September. Hmm. So that's... that that scarf that went in as is to create the quartzite mountains, the La Cloche Mountains in the background, and then the anomaly of this lake is that it happens to have quartz on one side, and it has granite, pink granite on the other side. Uh, and it's it's a scene that I keep doing over and over. Oh yeah, you know how there are places like that we love. Yeah, it's so nice to be able to create uh, rug hooking memories. We've Did had a couple. My... Pardon? Sorry, I just wanted to say we've had a couple comments. June says impressive first piece that was a while back, and attic anatomy says okay. seriously amazing and pamela Watkins says amazing work pat thank you I agree. everybody thank I you i agree <laughs> oh neat this is this was made for my mom uh for a footstool oh that seems appropriate for that piece yeah um she she chose a, a pattern of an actual rug out of a out of a large book and then I just adapted it to make it small. I mean, I think the actual rug was like 20 feet by something. Oh. It was huge. <laughs> yeah. So I simplified. <laughs> Good. And I did this in honor of my dad. We called it Francis. It's wow. a take on um, what's called a, a drapery diaper uh, motif that um, now I'm starting to get even wider. Oh, yeah. It almost looks like a coat of arms or something like that. Yeah, that's just amazing. How long does a piece like that normally take you? I know that's oh, probably... Oh, that's the question. It's always the question, right? I get that with yeah. weaving all the time. So it is... And here comes that, you know, usual answer. It depends. Right. It depends on whether I'm hooking straight line or if I'm doing a lot of shaping. It depends on how much thinking I have to do. So there are different types of projects that hook up very quickly and others that take more time. And some that surprise because this steel town went fast. But mm. it also is the widest cut. So that oh. helped it to go fast. And I just really knew 
because somehow you just sometimes everything falls together, <laughs> other times not so much. Do you draw it out first, Pat? Like, is it drawn on the backing? Yeah. Yes. Um, so what I'll do is uh, very um, uh, simple shapes. I don't put a lot of detail in the drawing because then it kind of is distracting, I find. It's better for me to just put very general lines in and then just go at it <laughs> and it fills in. Otherwise, if I change my mind, then I need to draw a new line, then it gets really busy and it gets messy, especially if you're using, and we usually use Sharpies. But lately oh. I've started to use chalk if I think I just have a rough idea of what I want to do, because then I can just blur it out. Right. Um, this was a rug that when I saw someone doing one like it, I said, why would anybody ever do that? Uh, it's a quilt. It's like a log cabin quilt. It's exactly right. It's the log cabin quilt pattern. Field and furrow is one of the names for this um, diagonal line approach, which creates when on the floor, it looks like light coming in a window and going right across it. It's just... Uh, it. It's making me teary, Pat, like beautiful things do. It makes me tear up. I can feel well, my eyes welling up. Well, <laughs> bless you. I, this is, this is I, I think, it. still to this day. What year was this? This is 01. I think it's still my favorite rug. So <sighs> your it. reaction does not surprise me. And it hangs sometimes downstairs in our living room. And one of the things about it that, personally I find makes it so successful is that it brings you in and you want to you want to look at every square because no two squares are the same and here was when I figured out how long it took me to hook something because I wanted to get this done in time for our guild's annual show and <clears throat> I was watching television on Sunday mornings to get it done and that introduced me to Pam Watkins Coronation Street. Thanks, Pam. And I got hooked <laughs> in more than one way. And I realized that I could get a square done in a morning. And a morning was four episodes, which is two hours. Okay. So there. And then I figured out, okay, I need this many weeks or this many hours. I've got to get to it if I want to get ready for the show. So now that's straight line hooking. And here's an example of when, and you can just do one. Oh, these are fun. Um, yeah, those look like a lot of fun. That's a good, that's a really good spot to start for somebody like me who right. would like to explore. Yes, and it's straight line, so it's a great way to practice and start making loops. Yeah. And it's a lovely way to play with texture and color and... Oh, I would all, love to do that. I would love that. All that jazz. Well, you, I'll show you. Come on over. Come on down. <laughs> we'll do something in the spring. <laughs> and then you can do Christmassy ones. Oh, fun. I know. It's just crazy. Anyway, um, what, there was something else I wanted to say about the log cabin. I can't remember. It's fine. It's gone. It's okay. Sorry. Maybe I'll remember. But there began my love of geometrics. So this is my wonky log cabin. Okay, it's an interpretation. When I step away, the light gets bad, but... It gives me Picasso vibes, somehow. <laughs> Thanks, because <laughs> Picasso is somebody that I um, spend a lot of time poring over as a kid. My mother had a Picasso coffee table book, and it really oh, wow. influenced me a lot. Um, I, I, I can see, see the influence it. today. That's interesting. This one is fluorescent by comparison. Wow. It's so exciting. I love it. Pink and green. We talked about that last week. <laughs> this came from a good friend of mine who's a painter, gifted me a tiny little painting. Holly O. Hi, Holly. Thank you. And so um, the whole room has become pink and green as a result. I love it. Um, <laughs> this is uh, from an antique that <gasps> I saw um, in New York City at the Folk Museum. 
And I just love the way, I mean, personally, I usually hate black, but black really does it for it almost, making these colors pop, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's like sparkles or yeah. lights or something like that. That's what it makes me think. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is the rug that um, I did as a result of a class at the Ontario Hook and Craft Guild's annual school and a fantastic school. The teacher, Marjorie Judson from Prince Edward Island, taught primitive pictorial. It's very um, group of seven-ish. I really wanted to bring wide cut to a pictorial, and it seemed to me to be perfect. And <clears throat> in their tradition is to hook straight line, left okay, to right across. And um, I cheated a little bit. I didn't hook straight across on everything like my trees. I was going to say the trees are really interesting with that texture. So those are, as is, um, scarves. So the things that I hunt for when I'm thrifting, because that's how I get all my wool, are blankets, um, men's Pendleton shirts, because they're 100% wool, um, and scarves especially love texture so plaids tartans are my jam um and because they they end up doing that kind of thing so that is just not you doing this kind of motion it's just the it texture. is oh it is. i okay. am yeah. moving i am moving it around oh, in some cases it. it's texture huh. sometimes what i'll do is i'll take a plaid or a tartan and I'll deconstruct it as I call it. So I'll take, this is part of a blanket and I'll cut out the red. I'll use the red line. Um, there's a big white line in this blanket too. So I would, you know, use that for something else and be, oh, there's the white line. Yeah, so. you can see that. Yeah. Oh, I love it. What a great art. Are, are you good for more? There's oh, more. I'm good for more. Bring it on. Keep it coming. All right. I'm, I'm getting dry in the mouth. I'm going to take a drink of water. In a oh, sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. It just happens. I'm excited. Um, here's wow. the same scene again. This is Killarney, George Lake. <sighs> I can't get far enough away. I have to go down the stairs. Oh, it's magnificent. Can I see the sky close up? I just yes. love and that's, it. This sky is blanket oh. material, as is, deconstructed. As is the water. Oh, and there's somebody and, there. I didn't see her before. Yeah, this is uh, somebody from the back with a canoe. I love it. And um, that's mohair in the distance, the Lacloche Mountains, and blanket <laughs> and blanket for the um, the granite. And I had had to hook the sky and the water two I think the water three times before I got it right because wow. sometimes you think you've got the right thing going in terms of your materials but it isn't always the right thing as some of my friends know me too well and I'm ripping it out oh, that's no. the nice thing about rug hooking is if you've made a mistake it's very forgiving unlike painting which depending on your medium can get quite complicated if you're trying to correct things waiting time and so right. on there's no waiting with rug hooking out it comes <laughs> like knitting <laughs> just pull it out i'm a knitter too i love knitting so this is a side view of my house in the winter time um this is very much after lauren harris who is famous for a painting he did of a house his house is bright bright orange well, not bright orange. His house is more tomato soup color, I should say. Mine is, I call mine orange sherbet. Orange is my favorite color, by the way. I love that. Orange and blue, that combination, there's just nothing better. Our I house is it. actually yellow, so it, it's in the same family. But um, the blues for the sky and, and uh, snow just seem to me to be demanding a nice bright yellow. Mm -hmm. Love it. And sometimes uh, I, I have to say, 
I steal. <laughs> uh, this is my Harrison house, I call it. So it's a combination of Lauren Harris and a house by Clarence Gagnon. Wow. It almost art. looks like a painting. And um, I just love the way Lauren Harris handles trees in the wintertime. And this is a combination of yarn. I've now introduced yarn in here. I oh. love using yarn for snow. And the snow is see. yarn? I'm just... It looks, oh, I see. Yep, I get it now. Yeah. Interesting. It's gorgeous. And then I did the dyeing for the sky to create Right. That. You know, we forgot to discuss that. You dye a lot of your own. Yes, I do. I, I would say, like, if I were to do a broad brush number, probably about 20% of my work is my dyeing going in. And then the rest is, I try to use as is as much as possible. I like the materials to do the talking in the piece. That's neat. Um, Attic Anatomy says she's sorry. Did she miss when you started? So you did say you started in 95? 95, I think was the first year I, I actually took the hook to, uh, to uh, the background. And um, my first finished piece is dated 96. So I think my learning piece was 95. Neat. This is a more recent piece. This is um, mostly as found blanket. It is of the shoreline in Cornwall in the UK. Oh, okay. It's, it's very abstract. It's an abstract landscape. I've got some um, architecture in the foreground. Mm -hmm. Wonky architecture, as I call it. I couldn't, I almost, they almost give me boat vibes, like boats, but yeah. in the wrong direction. And there's our cottage. Anyway. Oh, and, oh, it's so cute. I actually originally thought maybe it was Sleeping Giant. It has that look. Okay. Um, in Thunder yeah. Bay. Yeah. Very interesting. I love the color play. I really love the, um, not magenta, but the almost purpley magenta with the. Thank you. It, it's the, gone now. I can't see it anymore, but. I the did colors. the dyeing for that purple. This one. Yeah, yeah, that it's is, such a good color. That's blanket oh. material that I over dyed. Um, God, yeah. And so is all the water. Oh, it's so nicely done. And it's, this um, blanket, this blanket just made me, makes me crazy if I could find another one. So these colors are together in the same blanket and I've used oh. them in another, in another piece that you'll see coming up. I really love those two. And, this, and that scarf, these brights, oh, so it. much fun. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know. That one might be my favorite. I so love now this it. is um, Lac Megantic in Quebec where my sister lives. These are her trees <sighs> at the lakeside on her, uh, her property. And um, I did this shortly after the tragic train wreck that ruined the town. Oh. And, um, you know, I, I think of the tree as a survivor because they weren't very far from where it all happened. She was very lucky. Um, the, uh, some of my friends will remember <laughs> the background here for the sky was a poncho that I would wear once in a while. A crazy oh. big fat mohair poncho and um, I just cut it up and used it for the sky. Uh, I just, I, the sky, the water, the, the, the water is sparkling. It's like golden sparkles. And here's an, an example of the fabric was doing the work. Oh. This, was, this was skirt yardage. Did you, did you ever see or have you come across skirt yardage that was sold, particularly in Scotland, to tourists? Or maybe not just tourists, but tourists brought it home. And there'd be a yard and a half or something of, of a tartan or a plaid, the zipper and a button. And the seams you would bring it home and make a skirt out of it. Well, I still have the label from Edinburgh 
that this yardage came from. Anyway, that's what that was. I love that so much. Wow. Now, this one is really big. This is of, um, this is, I call this peak to peak. It's of Blackcomb and Whistler Mountain. Oh, I can get it in there. And the, um, can you see the, the tower? Yep, I can. So that's of the cable, the cable car or the gondola. Oh, the gondola. Oh, I get it. Okay. Peak to peak makes sense. <laughs> and, um, oh. man, it's heavy. It looks heavy. Yeah. Your I had arm. such a good time doing this. I love that sky too. Wow. So uh, again, that's yardage that I just, you know, deconstructed as I call it. There's a, some of that blanket again, that bright pink blanket that I used for the outline on the mountains. Oh, neat. Oh, I'm getting so... a workout. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I know it's it's the okay. rugs are heavy, right? So, so will YouTube shut us down if I take my sweater off? I'm dying. <laughs> if you take off your sweater, your shirt, and your bra, they might shut us down. <laughs> okay, all right. Um. So one of the the things apart from rugs that brought me to rug hooking that I love it so much for is that you can do practical things with it. And I love pillows. Wow. Right. I'm trying to decide what this is. I That's okay. So this is um this is Lauren Harris again and it's uh water okay trees and a village in the distance. Oh, I see. I was almost thinking the black and white was penguins. Oh, yeah, I see the village there. Now. Oh, it's so yeah. cute. And again, a lot of yarn. Some of it is uh, strips. The water is strips. The sky is blanket mixed in with lots of yarn. So if you have it. lots of yarn. I have lots of yarn. Yarn I have. There's so much you can do. Oh, wow. Look at that. Now, this is uh, from a woodcut that um, is um, in my sister's collection. It is of Trout Lake Big Camp in Lac Megantic, where she lives. And uh, I've interpreted this a few times, and so has she in paintings. Oh, fun. Which right up, brings yeah. me to something I'll get to if I can get there on the subject of, of a collaboration that we're doing. Are you good for time? Are we good? I think we're good. I, you know, like I said okay. before, we shoot for 30 minutes, but it doesn't matter. It can be an hour. It can Perfect. be 10 minutes. So um, practical things. I'm going to move the camera if that's okay. Just a sure. touch. I'm getting all red in the face. <laughs> So over here, neck back there. God, I didn't need to move the camera to bring them over, did I? <laughs> <laughs> These are tea cozies. This one's well used. I put it on the um, the wood stove, and it burnt the edge. Oh, <laughs> anyway, um, it gets lots of use, and it keeps my tea really, really hot, especially this when one, it's on the wood stove. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. <laughs> this is a coffee press cozy. I love it. It's so fun. Yeah. I just love the texture you get with the rug hooking. It's not it's something for, you get with weaving. Oh, that's a, beautiful. A little a little teapot. Right. So um oh, seasonal. I just took this down. <gasps> That's Father Christmas. Father Christmas. It, it's gorgeous. And I think I saw one hanging up back there behind you, too. Yes, my that's my skinny Santa. Um, as taught by one of our guild members, um, Cheryl. That's her pattern. And wow. um, I won a prize for this. At, uh, nice. I've got bragging rights um, at the Ancaster Fair. It's always fun to, to enter fairs. <laughs> Um, so the big one here 
which is almost too big for me to handle. Oh, is wow. um, a runner that uh, I did. Um, it it all it won a big prize at the OHCG Ontario Hook and Craft Guild one year of which uh, okay. I was very proud and it's much loved. Um, and this is another example of this kind of hooking and the log cabin that I showed you earlier are the kinds of things that you get all your color work planned at the beginning. They're easy to lay out on a back backing and then you just hook. And the pleasure is watching the different textures come together, plane and texture, um, value, it's a really great lesson in knowing value, understanding the light, the mediums and the darks, especially in the log cabin, because that's definitely clearly a play of light versus dark. One of the yeah. challenges in using a lot of recycled hooking or materials for hooking is finding light colored wools. There's lots oh. of dark around and we talked about shoddy and what that's all about. An awful yeah. lot of wool is recycled already when we get it, even though we're buying it in new garments. I love it. So is that something like, are you using that piece as a runner or is it oh, more? Yes. Yes. Yeah, you I do. had a yeah. lot of work to do today to clean things up. <laughs> well, we appreciate it. Thank you. Wow. Are you kidding me? <gasps> so this is uh, the wool princess. She won a prize. Um, the wool princess. Yeah. I was just having a lot of fun. And again, this is uh, Cheryl. Um, of our guild who uh, taught this as a class at um, uh, one of our retreats at Apps Ridge in Paris. Wow. So much fun. Lots of people did them and they were so much fun to see people uh, putting them up. When we go to our annual show, oh my gosh, I remember the first time I saw it. It's every year annual, except, you know, um, where all the branches of the guild come together and everyone brings the work that they haven't shown before. And the first one I saw, I guess it was 96, I just remember walking into the room and being flabbergasted by how much work had been done, knowing that none of it had been shown before. And all I could think of was how many loops that was. <laughs> millions of loops that had been pulled up. Right. So I did a series for my bathroom. This is done with... Um, nylon stocking wow this, no way this is my sedna she is um, a folk uh, figure in uh, west coast salish inuit and inuit folklore i could okay. be getting some of that wrong so forgive me um, but she is really the goddess of creation and um, i had been out west visiting our sons we saw we went we visited a, a salmon hatchery and there was row everywhere, and there, and it was, it happened to be spawning season, so the salmon were very active, and there was all of these red eggs everywhere on the shoreline. Right. And um, so I borrowed from the theme of creation. There is my salmon birthing a woman, and um, that's a little guy chasing her, as guys like to do. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Then I did this piece again with the salmon, this time with a cat. This is Cat and Chum, um, inspired by a jazz, a vintage jazz album cover. And um, this goes, this is on the floor in front of the shower. Uh, okay. No one will let me put Sedna on the floor. I had ended up having to hang her up, but. <laughs> I did it in nylons because, well, it creates a very different feeling, a much stiffer fabric or diff Oh. But I did it because I wanted it to be washable and being polyester or whatever, nylon, not polyester. Um, of course, I knew that it would, first of all, wear like iron. And secondly, it would be washing machine friendly because we don't throw these in the washing machine generally as a rule. Nancy Beaton did. And I remember her telling us the story of her doing that. And I think everyone at the table was just holding their breath, waiting to see what the punchline was. And she said they came out just fine. So I've yet oh. to do it, but I was certainly thinking of her today when I was cleaning my first rug that oh. she taught me 
thinking, <laughs> oh, do I dare? It's got, yeah, that would be uh, not something I'd be eager to do. And this one goes down on the floor in front of the sink. Um, and this is different. This is proddy, or also known as proggy. Pokey is another term, depending on where you're from in the okay. world. Rug hooking is international, um, very popular in the UK and Australia. And this is done very differently. So instead of loops, these are short lengths of fabric that I use a rotary cutter to make. So they're mm -hmm. about this long and maybe about this wide. Well, you can see what that is. Yeah. And um, this is all polyester and I've used a tool like this. Instead of a hook at the end, it's just a blunt point. Oh. So okay. what I do is, where did that go? I would take one end of the of the rectangle of fabric. Just imagine it there. I would just take one end and poke it in. Oh, grab it with my other hand back here, pull it up slightly, and then go to the next hole or close hole to it and push down the other half of the rectangle into that hole and pull it through on this side. Okay. And now I would have half and half and just pull it and it's just the tension again that holds all of them in and here's what the back looks like oh okay i've thrown this in the washing machine and the dryer several times i've oh, yet to lose wow. one of these not one of them has fallen out and does it ever feel good underfoot in front of the of the sink in the morning with my little i bet that reminds me of um, a kid, when I was a kid in the 70s, I think, my grandmother, remember her giving us some rug hooking kit? I forgot all about it, but it was like, came in these little round circles with this little, these little, they were yarn, and yes. we would hook them into the back, and the back had the pattern on it. Yes. We did, I remember there was a mushroom, and like an owl, I think. Did your hook have a little, a little yes. different? Yes. That's latch hooking. And that's a latch whole hooking. other area of rug hooking. And I love latch hooking. I have some amazing pieces that I've collected over the years. And um, my favorite is one where the artist has varied the heights of the yarn so that oh, that there's would different be things. And it's a landscape with trees. It's beautiful. That's now, I didn't bring it out for this because I only brought out things I made. But yeah. So... Remember I showed you that little short strip of fabric? <gasps> so this, this, I swear, is, I think, Linton Tweed. They supply Chanel. Oh. I bought yardage of this, found at the Bibles for Missions thrift store in Dundas, Ontario. I still have a few yards of it. And so I made a pillow and I hooked the other side. That's so amazing. I recreated the hound's tooth. This is really wide. This is like the widest I can hook with. And oh, I put wow. an English rose in the middle of it. Because when you this, me actually, this pattern had been sitting languishing on a background that I had done years ago and I never hooked it. And I thought it's time to get that done. So this got it done. That's great. When I saw the back, I thought it almost looks like weaving. Like I almost, it almost it does look like weaving. It is. Yeah. Exactly. Beautiful weaving. That's amazing. Um, <clears throat> we're coming close, but I still have a few. Are you good? Okay. Keep All coming. Right. <laughs> so the pandemic um, gave me all kinds of time. I'm normally working and traveling and being around here. I decided it had to be like a job. So I was coming up here and hooking for hours and watching, listening to the news and probably too much, but anyway. Probably, yeah. So, <laughs> this is so big and heavy, I can hardly lift it. <laughs> this just goes on and on. It's a runner that I made for our trailer because we got an old Airstream trailer just before the pandemic hit. My husband uh, was... Wow did um, fix it up 
and I decided I needed a runner for it. So I did something that a lot of rug hookers say is a big no-no, and I I um, latex the back. Gotcha. So that um, this can be washed. Um, it is all polyester and Fentex, and I did not rug hook this. I punched it. I used punch needle, and that's a tool that looks like this. So it's got an an okay. uh, eye. It's a needle that you thread. Oh, okay. So you bring your yarn out this end. So you'd have a short little bit there, and then you run the yarn down along the channel through here and out to your ball. Oh. And it goes like this. This goes in, and then the next hole, and the next hole, and the next hole. And that's a lot of that was a lot of punching, <laughs> but hey, I had seen, a lot of time. I've seen people trying to sell stuff like that, like on Facebook or whatever, and I always think that looks like a scam. Like, how's that work? Just punch, punch, punch. I guess it's a real it, thing. It can be. It can be tough for some people. I know some folks complain about the repetitiveness of it. I never had a problem in my hand, but I've only had a problem in building a bit of a oh. bump. It goes away when I stop, but um, <laughs> it's pressure on there. And I did the tiny matching piece to go into the bathroom. Oh, nice. I love it. So fun. So these, to me, individually, are more abstract landscapes because I see them as landscapes. Really? This is a better one. I think that's, there is an up and a down to this. I can see that. I... Yeah. And there's a tree running up the end and it goes all the way along the whole piece. And then the, so it can be seen from two ends of the trailer from where we sit oh, on the sofa and then also from the bedroom. Another, this is, I'm going to turn, this is easier if I turn the camera. I like what I'm seeing. Yeah, this is a commercial pattern by Martina Lassar. Martina is a rug hooking um, teacher and dealer of patterns, equipment, and beautiful, beautiful wool. So um, it's called Organica. Organica. Oh, I love it. Wow. So it's amazing. Pat, for me as a weaver, I struggle the most with deciding what to do next. How do you decide what to do next? Well, it's, you know what? It's as if we planned this and everybody, we did not because <laughs> inspiration sometimes doesn't come easily, but it happens that my sister, who is a painter, suggested a collaboration. And I took her up on it because I thought, well, first of all, I love her art and I love her. And I just thought, yeah, I could really get into this. So um, first piece of the collaboration. Well, not oh. first piece, but one of more recent pieces. This is a painting which she did. So the collaboration is I'm hooking her paintings and she's painting my hookings. Oh, I love it. Love it. So this is abstract trees. I don't know if you're making that out. I see the trees for sure. And there's a little log cabin in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. And this was such a delight to hook. Fantastic fun. Looks and then like this fun. one. So if I can manage to show it to you because it's heavy. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. I can't... Wow. So this is the moose. This is her yep. moose, which um, she painted a while back. And um, if anybody does puzzles, they may recognize this because Ravensburger picked it up and uh, added it to their Canadian collection. Oh, neat. And um, 
when I go to my sister's, I uh, sleep in my niece's room and this hangs over the bed. Wow. So I hooked that and I'm just now winding up a piece, which is a landscape. There seems to be a lot of rock water and trees going on in my world. And I've been seeing two more pieces and one in particular that I'd like you to see before we sure. call it quits. And this one I did um, <clears throat> after my husband started hunting and we call this the spirit deer. Wow. I love the shadows, so, so much detail. I can't tell if you're getting it all. Sorry, that doesn't make I think so. Of. I think we saw it all. Um, what uh, I love about this piece, particularly apart from just the, I just think it works, it is that work. I've used, I think this was the first time I used all as is. So the sky is a deconstructed kilt. Oh, neat. Which is unusual to come across a kilt in such light colors. The trees yeah. are blanket as is. <laughs> and then the ground are hunting shirts, wool hunting shirts that have been deconstructed. Wow. Plaid. And the deer is a blanket as is deconstructed. I love it so much. It's so inspiring. That's so inspiring. Um, I guess that's the whole point of this show and share is to inspire one another, right? I <clears throat> thought I'd show you this is my son, John. Uh, I love <laughs> when he first went to Whistler, this is a, uh, oh, that was 08 when he went out west and never came home. I try not to take it personally. Anyway, I took this picture of him driving his big juiced up uh, truck, uh, you know, so, so tall you could barely get in it. Anyway, <laughs> um, we were driving up the Sea to Sky from Whistler to Pemberton. You can see I've got the mountains in the oh, yeah. mirror. I love it. So here's an example of where I took a really fine cut approach to get some of the details in his face, but I mixed it with really wide. His eyebrow is the widest cut. I did it in one sweep. Right. And I think of Picasso when I do stuff like this. <laughs> um, his mustache is one sweep. Wow. And I can thank my sister for the orange in here. Um, she loves orange and she encouraged me to do something bright and different. Um, and she also helped me by running the photograph through software to give it a Warhol effect. Oh, interesting. But I had in my stash, inherited probably from Nancy, because I inherited a lot of wool from her, a several value swatch that created the face for the face. So I could, you know, they were all married, but they went from one color to another, what we call a transitional swatch. Nice. And yeah. just for equal time, this is my other son, Spencer. I don't have the rug. He has it. But this is Spence. That's amazing. Also from a photograph, which I took. And this is not as hard as you think it is. It really isn't. Um, you just, in my view, anyway. Um, yeah. It's not hard when you know what you're doing. <laughs> you and you have some artistic flair. <laughs> I don't consider myself artistic. I learned how. My sister has the natural talent. I have the, the studied, learned talent. And then you can do matter. little things, which are so much fun. Coloring oh, yeah. again, not the same lake, but this is my husband having a nap at Johnny Lake. I love it. My house. Oh, I love it. My I need house. to do something little. Love that sky. My neighbor's barn, a favorite. Love it. Spencer snowboarding. It's called peeking over. Apparently that's what they call it when you're going, you know, you're peeking, you're going over from one peak to the other. Oh. <sighs> 
ode to my Volvo that I drove for 16 years, although it was green. I took artistic license and made it red and put the Christmas tree on top. It reminds me of um, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. That's what it reminds me of. <laughs> um, this is different because it's hooked both sides. So it's oh. two-sided hooking. Pam Watkins taught this to us at a J.J. Ruggers um, day. And um, so much fun. It looks fun. It looks fun. And talking about inspiration, Canada Post is inspiration for a series that I did um, of postcards. We did a workshop on postcards at JJ's and I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of the lady who led it. She was wonderful. And um, what she showed us how to do was to create postcards with rug hooking and that we can send them through the mail quite no successfully. Um, and what I haven't done is finish these with the postcard on the back. So there's fabric that you can print that have the details, you know, the line down the middle, so and yeah. the address, and you put your and I have the stamps. That's the thing. I've, I've got these stamps, so I can oh. use the stamps as I did for the one because we all had a project together where we exchanged postcards. Oh, and cool. um, I sent my postcard off with the stamp, and what a wonderful, fun project that was! Oh, that would be so fun. Yeah. So there's more, but I think I'm exhausted. <laughs> And I'm sure you've had enough. Um, <laughs> oh, well, maybe there's always one more thing. Just to give you a sense of what I love doing and why I like to go to the dye pot. And it's to get, you know, selection when I'm doing snow and sky. Love it. So this is, these are white blankets, which I've thrifted. And in some cases, they've been given to me because people get to know that you're the person who'll take blankets. <laughs> <laughs> they show up. Yeah. that's awesome well thank you so much for spending your evening with us I really appreciate well, that you're very welcome thank you Rebecca uh this has been a lot of fun and um well I'd love to show you how to do it someday I I hope I have that chance hopefully in the spring we can make that happen that would be nice I'd like that very much all right well thank you so much oh. next week actually next Wednesday we have um I don't know if you, you might even know her, Alice Abbott. We did an episode with her. We did our studio tour, but she's also a rug hooker ah. and a weaver. So she's, I, I don't know. I think she's 50, 50. I've seen, she's done lots of both. So okay. anyways, well, we'll look forward, forward to, to that. It. Yes. That's great. All right. I'm going to sign off. Thank you again so much. It's been so lovely to have you here. You're very welcome. Rebecca. Bye for now. Keep well, take care. Thank you. Bye, you too.